Well, welcome to another RD Works Learning Lab. Um, you've caught me in the middle of making a couple of pieces that I hope is going to help me fix my curtains problem. Now, it's a little bit of a, a radical solution and it's not something that I've heard people using before, but hey, I'm quite happy to go out and experiment and try these things. So. Um, we're making a prototype out of acrylic, but it's possible that I shall have to make this out of steel eventually. There we go, two simple pieces. Right, let's just take a few minutes out and remind you that about a year ago, um, I think it was probably session 83, um, I asked a question, is this curtains forever? And it was a whole session analysing why maybe we were getting curtains in our deep cut engraving. Now we can clearly see the evidence of those curtains <clears throat> in the background of this text. These vertical lines. And I think I conclusively satisfied myself at that point in time that these marks were an exact replica of the timing belt. Hence the question, is it curtains forever? Because while I've got a timing belt, I've got a problem. So, it's a problem that I've been mulling over for the past year. It keeps coming to the surface and I've got other more important things that I need to do. Now just recently I was pulling through some of my old shelves and I came across my collection of lead screws various types of lead screw that I've got here. Um, this one is a, probably just the sort of thing that we need. Um, it wouldn't be particularly difficult to put a lead screw along the gantry and drive the head backwards and forwards with a lead screw from the motor on the end. That would get rid of the belt. Unfortunately, these lead screws that I happen to have are not really suitable for the job. So I went round looking to see if I could find a suitable lead screw and something like this which is basically an acetal nut. Quite a quite a cheap thing because it's just basically moulded. <clears throat> I thought would be a good solution, cost effective. I found an anti-backlash version which was absolutely brilliant and when I looked at the price for a one metre length uh, with an anti-backlash nut it said £86.72. I thought, that's a good deal. Um, I'll have one of those. Um, so I went to order one and found out that there was an error in the price and it was £382.72. Um, somebody would made a mistake in the catalogue. So, bang, that went one up in smoke because I'm certainly not spending that amount of money to, to investigate or try and fix a problem. So then I thought, I'll tell you what I'll do. A much cheaper solution would be a rack and pinion. We put the motor on the drive bracket and put the pinion at the back and we can drive the head backwards and forwards. Okay, so it does mean to say we've added the stepper motor onto the mass of the head now, but hey, if it fixes the problem, what is the problem? I started thinking about that a little bit more seriously and I thought I think it is going to be a bit messy and then I had a light bulb moment well let's go back and look at the pieces that I'm making and just possibly we may be able to draw the curtains on curtains well here's what I've made look a little stack of six ball races three and three ball races that sit together as a couple of columns Let's go and see how we're going to fit them onto the China Blue machine. Well, the first thing we're going to do is go through the uh, electrical control cabinet and we're going to slacken off the timing belt. It's a very weird tensioning system, but it seems to work. There's just enough slack in there now to take that off there without dissembling the belt. I've got to take the timing belt off anyway. I'm an idiot. So the timing belt has got to come off. And to do that I shall have to remove the head as well. But we know it's no big deal to set the head up, so 
we're not in the least bit worried. Okay, so we've got this end of the timing belt off as well. And the first thing that I'm going to do is to turn the timing belt over and fix it back on again. Okay, so I've put the timing belt on the wrong way and I'll leave it loose at the moment so that I can slide it up and down its slot. And now on this end of the timing belt, I've got my old timing belt here just conveniently. And what I'm going to do is just tape the two timing belts together. Hopefully they'll lock together like that. And that will allow me to pull this timing belt back through like that. Okay, now what I've got to do is to turn this timing belt over now. Hopefully going to thread it back what would normally be the wrong way. Yep, so that it has got the flat face onto the rollers. There we go. Now we've got it. Okay, so now I've got my timing belt threaded through completely the wrong way. Well, it's the conventionally wrong way, but it's the right way for what I want this time round. Now, the, the, the stepper motor is held on by four screws. And what I'm going to do is to loosen the two front screws off. Now, I don't know how long they are, and I might have to make them longer. So let's just see how long they are. They will be M4, and they're certainly not long enough. I can't feel what's behind there. I reckon there is a nut behind there, which is a bit of a nuisance because it means I can't easily get to it without taking the whole assembly off, which I wasn't very keen to do. Well, let's just see whether we can succeed at this. If I put my finger behind there and hold the nut, as you can see, I'm wobbling the I'm wobbling the screw around, so if I can take the screw out and hold the nut in place. I've got it back on, which is good news, but how on earth I'm going to get to that one, I don't know. Oh, actually, that one might actually be easier, because it's just, just underneath there. This one's hidden behind a lip. Well, after a bit of a struggle, I've managed to get that bracket onto the two fixing screws that hold the stepper motor onto the bracket. So those screws are now performing two functions. Not only they're holding the stepper motor on, but look, when I push that in, you'll see that what it's doing when it drops in now, I should be able to push that in and the belt has now basically turned into a rack and pinion. It's no longer a tooth drive belt because I've got smooth sides on the inside and I've got the tooth side on the outside. And what I'm doing is I'm pushing these two bearings so that I get a contact angle around about uh, 60 or 80 degrees. So I've now just got to tighten the bracket up and tension it so that it sits up snug against the, uh, the pulley there. And then we can have a go at tensioning up the rest of the system and I haven't had to change the belt. And the next question is, am I going to be able to put enough tension on the belt? Is there enough adjustment? And if all else fails, I shall have to put another hole in the belt just here. I don't want to do that until I'm absolutely sure this works. This is only sort of a, a temporary job. OK, so everything's going to be reversed now. Well, this axis is going to be working in the opposite direction. So. When I turn it on, I've got to be a little bit careful. Pushed it onto zero. Now we'll try and drive the other way. It thinks it's reached zero now because I've put that on there. We will make uh, a steel version of this bracket now that I know that it's 
it's got a pretty reasonable chance of working and I don't mind putting the effort in now. I had a bit of a look at this design and decided on a couple of things. First of all, rather than shorten the belt, um, by separating the wheels out very slightly I can make the belt shorter naturally and it also slightly improves the, um, the grip angle to about 90 degrees around the main, around the pulley. The other thing, now I've made it of steel and I've used a different fixing method. I'm still fixing on three of the screws for the stepper motor, but I've also moved it round the corner so that it's no longer like that across the stepper motor, but it's now like that. The reason being, when it was like this, this belt was, as, as this head got closer to this end, the belt was actually pulling out, which was making, effectively, it shorter. So it was actually accelerating the head as it got towards this end here. So what I've done, I've tipped the, tipped the whole of the mechanism round so that this belt remains parallel right up to the end here. We've got it fixed in place, but now, hopefully, we should be able to get tension on the belt. Well, that does feel nice and solid. The belt is just about clearing the back there. OK, now when I switch the machine on, this is going to go that way. It should come this way, but it's going to go that way. And I'm going to have to fool it with this sensor by putting a plate over it. Twice, I think. First there, and now it's going into creep mode. And there we go. So it's not quite on zero, but it's not bad. But everything's going the wrong way at the moment, so I've got to go in with my uh, laptop now, and we've got to edit the machine vendor properties. Okay, so we've got to go into vendor properties, which are file, vendor settings, and the code is RD and four eighths, one, two, three, four. Okay, first of all, I've got to read what's in there at the moment. It says the directional polarity at the moment is negative. So I've got to go positive and I've got to write it back. Which I've now done. And hopefully, well, that's automatically changed the, uh, the keys. So hopefully if I press reset, it will now go over to that corner. which it does. I've got my machine back. <laughs> it was as simple as that, just one change. Nice tension on there. Let's pull the belt, belt down a bit and push that one up just a shade and lock them up. Well, I have to say, that's looking pretty good. The test will come when we see if we've still got curtains put this plate back on which is my head mounting plate you should just need to set that head up height wise it's not too bad but it's got to drop down by three or four millimeters that looks pretty near center the head has got to go in just a shade I'll just check the squareness of the beam So I'm pretty happy with that. That was fairly simple to do, wasn't it? Let's go and do some tests. You can see what 200 millimeters a second looked like at the top there. Um, that's with the, with the head coming down from the top left-hand corner. And so all the smoke was being dragged across the text. Now here we're doing the same thing but this time we're starting at the bottom left hand corner and we're running at 400 millimetres a second. This is testing text with ramp built into it. Uh, the idea was to cut deep at the bottom 
and my first reaction was oh that looks pretty good I know it looks rather messy here but that was because I did the cut from the top to the bottom and all the fumes were dragged back across the text um, I was cutting very deep with a lot of um, a lot of energy a lot of power and as I got along to here I thought oh my goodness I haven't got rid of it after all and then I thought well hang on I've cut through several layers of wood here and because this is plywood um, there's a grain underneath this is very nice wood on the surface but underneath we've got some um, grain laying in a different direction and so I did a shallower cut and on the shallower cut which I think has probably just about gone to the interface of this and the layer underneath because we can just see the grain of this layer there's no hint on there of any curtains then I did a second set of tests at 400 millimeters a second and the first test I did was again a ramp test with 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 powers of 10 and 60 percent 10 percent minimum 60 percent maximum and I thought to myself goodness me what have I done here look we've got all these striations on here curtains no they're not curtains because they're they're not the same distance apart they're all different angles there are missing pieces here this is the grain on the wood underneath that is preferentially etched deeper depending on whether or not the resin is in the wood or not and that gives this strange effect so what I did to prove that point more than anything else I just stayed with a very very lightweight etch on this top surface here so I only engraved with 10% minimum 20% maximum and as you can see we've got zero curtain effect here we then went up to 1030 again zero curtain effect We're just about beginning to maybe break through to the second layer so at 1040 we're just about breaking through this top layer of white wood and we can just see a hint of the grain underneath at 1050 we've definitely hit the grain underneath and at 1060 well there it is and at 1070 we're definitely starting to etch into the grain I think we can actually say goodbye to curtains it didn't cost me very much at all to fix my curtains problem I haven't had to buy a new belt I haven't had to buy a new servo drive system time will tell whether or not I find any of the other advantages or disadvantages but I'm certainly not going to change it at the moment and uh, well we maybe have to go back and check some of the things that we checked for resonance for example um, stepper motor resonance and see whether or not this has had any effect on it anyway I hope you found that interesting um, thanks for your time and I'll see you in the next session and there's the air assist pump just switched off